One, two, three. It's the Chumming It Up podcast. I uh, don't know what day it is because it may take a few days to release this, but for us, it's August 12th um, of 2021. It's the Chumming It Up podcast. We are back in the studio live from the GT Productions LLC operating studio the drapes are falling off because we haven't been in the studio we've been recording on the road we've been in here maybe three times this summer and you know who's been here even less who got off easy may i add on the last episode without having to explain himself uh ladies and gentlemen in the booth andre andre let's play the music where you been buddy i've been around here there everywhere the only good thing Andre's done is get a new laptop here. and he, So now that we don't have to wait, because generally when we start the episode, it's 35 minutes of waiting for my laptop to turn on. But guess what? Those days are behind us. We're using a $2,000 machine for $5 worth of work. That's We're right. just playing music through it. And uh, speaking of music, let's hit it. This is gold in the form of chum. Give it up for my friend Chumley. All right. Um, it's the Chumming It Up podcast. We're here. We're live. We're having some good times tonight. Uh, breaking news. Google is calling the worker bees home. Have you heard? I haven't. Google has decided that if you want to exercise your right to work at home that they gave you, you are going to take a 25% pay cut really? off the top. They said, hey, listen. And then Google came. So here's, let's give some background here, okay? Yeah. So when COVID hit, Google sent all the little bees home and said, hey, go home. We can work from home for, for good. Um, and then they're like, you know what? We like this so much. We're going to offer flexibility to everybody. Everybody can stay at home. If you like being at home, good on you. You can stay there. Uh, and then months later, they go, you know what? We don't have enough control, I don't think. they went. I, these people, they're going to the gym during the day. They aren't living, breathing Google and, you know, and, and loving what uh, Daddy Bezos has to offer as well. And so they said, hey, we're going to do what we've always done and pay a competitive market rate for our employees, which means that if you're an employee who lives in New York City, you will make more than an employee who lives in country side of Connecticut because... It's living expenses. It's not a big deal. Is there a cricket in the studio? We haven't been here long enough that bugs have infested the studio. I don't know if you can hear this at home, but there is a a genuine chirp going on. And now we're having a back and forth. Hey, fuck you, buddy. This is hilarious. He goes, the show sucks. (laughs) He goes, and and hey, and here's another thing. I support Google. And thanks to the studio crowd. And thank you, everybody. Yes. So, which is tough because now when I say something and nothing happens and I hear a cricket, I will kill myself. Anyways, Google goes, so sorry, we're going to do what we've always done. We're going to pay market rate for our employees. So sorry that you chose to move out of New York City now because of COVID. And you went, you know what? I don't like the uh, pervy Italian mayor or governor, whatever his fucking name is. I don't like de Blasio. He's the mayor, right? De Blasio's yeah. the mayor. Cuomo Homo was the, yeah, uh, the yeah. governor who touchy, touchy, feely, feely on people. And they go, you know what? I'm going to move back home to Wisconsin. And they go, we don't want Google workers in Wisconsin. You guys are all morons. So they went, you know what? Take a 25% pay cut because you don't have to commu- like you don't have to be here anymore you have to pay two thousand dollars for a one-bedroom apartment next to a bunch of crack addicts and you go well that's not really fair and google goes tough titties yeah you know what it is truthfully let's put our tinfoil hats on uh office developers and real estate uh well who owns a lot of real estate fucking poly you know like you know right. owners pot i guarantee the ceo of google owns quite a bit of real estate and he goes you know what not a big fan of no one being in my buildings anymore. He goes, right. eh, well, this is how we're going to incentivize them to come back in with this flexibility. But guess what? There's more of us than them. Truthfully, if you want to, go be- behead, your, behead your boss. Go to your manager and cut his head off tomorrow. With you, you guys, all six of you in your cubicles, get out, get an axe, go up. We're starting the revolution. It's right from here in this basement. These black curtains, this screams a guy who wants to start <laughs> some sort of revolution in your office. I, in fact, I, we went out to dinner with strangers uh, weeks ago after a boat cruise. And the strangers were like, she goes, she goes, what do you do? Or I, she was like, I'm in HR. I know what people are like. I went, you know, shit. I went, you don't know dick about anything. You don't know dick about shit is how I would actually phrase that. Because I can guess what all of you guys are. And she looks at her and she goes, I bet you're like 
<laughs> you're like the quiet, said. smart type or something. I went, because he hasn't said anything, he's stoned. Fuck you. I went, what are we doing here? I mean, then they look at me and then and then she goes, she goes, mm, I bet you don't like to be anybody's employee. I went, who does? Yeah. Who does like to be anybody's employee? I said, listen to me, lady. I am your job's worst nightmare. I joined jobs purely to start a revolution. I go, you guys really don't like being here, right? You know that, right? And they're like, we've had a good five years here. We like it. I go, no, you don't. I go, no, no, no. Let me, let me show you what it's like to deliver pizza for five hours a week and work at a brewery. And then you really know what living is. You know, when you, when if you play pickup basketball and you sprain your ankle and you go, I can't afford this. So you walk it off. That's living, baby. But really, That's living. A Foot. But really, it's a broken foot. You get a you get a Jones fracture, you know. And so Google says, "Hey, come on back in," and people are gonna listen, man. I say this, dude: kill your bosses. That's fi- fire your companies. Never a better thing to do, never a more fun thing to do than fire your company. Uh, I've done it twice in less than a month. Um, I'm not happy about either. Less of them. than a month or less than. No, in less than a month, I would say, because you know, you fire them, you fire, yeah. and then you're there, yeah. you know. And so these things happen, right? You fire, you know, you you're out, and then you're back in. So here's, let's say, in layman's terms, I leave a job, I get a new job. Job does not turn out to be what maybe I thought it was. Maybe I had some rose colored glasses on. I leave that job after one day, and I go, old job, can I come back? And so you know what. I like corporations, and I think that everybody should be in one. And truthfully, I think that uh, they're they're bene- uh, benevolent, uh, uh, you know, orchestras and systems that allow you to uh, live in the lifestyle you've become accustomed and take uh, two thousand dollars trips to Austin, Texas. And so, you know, sometimes you just have to be in a corporation. So go back to work. Don't kill your boss. I'm changing my tune actually. In the tune of this conversation, a corporation will you can trust what a corporation says. The, I promise you. The funny thing is, your stand up bit about like looking for a new job and stuff yeah i don't want to give too much of it away but like you really were just looking for someone else to tell you what to do 100 <laughs> percent. I, I was just searching away uh and i found it and hey it's good to be back baby. but but then as as these things go you go back to your ex at the end of the day yeah, well, hey, hey we're working things out you know me and then it'll be better this time the <laughs> Till they start hitting me six months from now, and I, you know, and then I got to decide whether to kill myself or leave. But hey, but we're not there yet. We're, we're, we're we got six stack months. Some money. We got six months. That's what we call runway in the business, people. So I got to start booking gigs. If you know somebody, anyways, please, <laughs> please. But yeah, man. I mean, that's a really cool thing. You know, it's like you know, it's not like the world's on fire and there's not a, and like and and you know, COVID's coming in again. I want to go sit in an office with a mask on my face. That's, I wake up every morning, I go, you know what, let me add two hours of commuting to my day and go into the fucking New York City where it smells like piss and rats and go work in an office because I get to sit on a bouncy chair, an exercise ball, and they go, this is what, <laughs> this is what innovation is. No, innovation is being able to work from your fucking lake house that you stuffed, that you suffered for. Right. Unbelievable. Fuck you, Google. Take, hey, fuck you, Google. That might be the episode title. Good luck copywriting me for the fourth time in a month. You know, I'm not too worried about it. Take my website down. Not like this is a YouTube show. Listen, we're putting this episode up on Parler. Okay, that's where we're going to... We've actually signed a deal exclusively with Parler. <laughs> They've offered us a lucrative amount of money to put out uh, some very important information, such as... <laughs> and we get to do live coverage at the next Capitol ride. It's, yeah, well, guess what? We get a front row seat. They're gonna, I'm going to be dragging a little Red Rider wagon with Andre in the back with a microphone, and we're just going to interview people, and we're going to figure out what's really going on here. And, uh, you know, get the... Listen, we're going to gauge the heartbeat of these people. Um, but yeah, anyways, go for good for Google. I don't really know where I'm going, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, though, no, let's get into the job thing a little bit. Uh, this is a, I learned a life lesson though, a little bit. Okay. Water the grass where you are. Sure. Don't the grass can so, be greener. Sure. Obviously. Yeah. Any day you, you can gotta look. make sure the lawn has enough grass. It, well, yeah. And sometimes you go, is there, you know, isn't enough? but then you don't, but sometimes, um, you know, we get so busy looking at uh, new grass and you go, you know what? Maybe this job was affording me certain flexibilities, pay uh, schedule and, uh, and, and a lifestyle. And, uh, and then I almost left it for none of that. The grass was not greener. I said, so yeah, I don't have to, you know, say best regards in an email, but I would have worked twice as much for half the money. And I go, what have I done here? Here, and I would have to quit stand up. What do you you know? You can't you can't do these things. I could not quit stand up. Yeah, would have been a blessing, but Andre's fired. By the way, we're we're looking. Not only are we looking for hosts on the Tuesday catch up, we're looking for a new producer on Chumming It Up um, because Andre is just he's. I mean, he's off the deep end. Um, <laughs> he's changed. He's changed. His brain isn't firing the way it used to. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, water the grass where you're at, right? Appreciate uh, your have perspective, right? Before you make a decision, I, I'm a big pro con list guy, and I'm good at doing pro con list. But I didn't pro con list this one, and I know I, and that's when I knew I fucked up. I, I was like, oh no, what? How about thons lie? No, I kind of vividly remember us talking over pros and cons, and there were more cons, and you you pulled the trigger. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. I think I yeah. So, anyways, mistakes were made. I'm back. Uh, so you know, but all my profiles are private again. I'm just kidding. I don't care. Whatever. If I get fired for comedy, we're gonna. It is what it is. We're gonna rebel radio. Uh, mark my words. Let me say this. If I was to get fired, I would start a chumming it up radio station every single morning from eight to ten a.m. I would just be talking, and that's and you wouldn't and you wouldn't get enough of me. If you, as if there isn't enough radio out there, I would figure out a way to do it, and you'd have chumming it, on your, chumming it up on your radio every morning. We would we take callers. It'd be and when I say we, me, because Andre's still a human. He has a job, but I will be here for you. Listen, everybody, we have to make sure he keeps his job. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing we need. Can you imagine the things that would come out of my mouth if I was on it for ten hours? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, anyways. Um, we have a packed uh, amount of things that I want to talk about. Yeah, I'm scared. Um, We're already 11 minutes in. Now, Harley brought me home leftovers. Harley's been doing these farm-to-table meals, which, honestly, is that not every meal? To a certain extent, yeah. Pretty much. It Pretty starts much. somewhere. Everything's farm-to-table. Yeah, so start whoever somewhere. was like, no, it's straight from the farm to the table. Like, okay, with a few turns, you have every meal. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's right. not... So, anyways, he's been doing these farm-to-table meals, and they're always, here's my problem with them, is they are so up their own asses. They're like, this is sustainable. It's like, really? This fucking 80-foot plastic tent, all the chairs, all the gas to get people to come to this fucking godforsaken farm in the middle of bumpfuck Wisconsin. Yeah. That's sustainable? And they go, yeah, it's, a, it's an event. And they cook this food, and here's the problem. People who think they cook high-class food all they do is make garbage. It's not good. I have not had a single, like, someone's like, no, no, this is five. It's like, no, it's disgusting. They go, we're making pan-seared trout. And they go, you know what's, like, extra kind of, like, here's what Harley did. He brought leftovers home. Yeah. And he went, this is, he's like, it's good. He's like, but if I, if I open a tray and I can't figure out what needs to be eaten hot or cold, it's garbage. You should be able to clearly delineate which food is what. I had no idea if it all was the same food or if we killed 17 different animals to make this farm dinner happen. There was some moldy carrots in there. And Harley was trying to explain the menu to me at 7.30 in the morning. He's like, so this is a pan seared with some... Cr-. And I went, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I went, pull the creamer out of the fridge and shut up. I went, I don't want to hear from you right now. So then I never got the thing in the menu. So then I, I FaceTime him and I go, what... What is this? Because he left me a full tray. I'm talking like a Thanksgiving tin where you'd see the sweet potatoes and marshmallows. So, you know, naturally when you see something like that, you're excited. That's a good amount. Like, you're like, oh, it's brisket or brats or like, you know, good quantity food. It's got a little splits. No, this was ass. There was like seven moldy, big ass carrots that weren't even cooked. Like, at least cooked carrots are a little bit of like the crunch, but then they mush. These are all crunch. Yet they were still, they tasted garbage. I told him I didn't taste anything in the entire plate. I, I mean, I cooked everything. There was something called pork pate. Yeah, sure. Pork no. pate, yeah. So what? He just, the, the chef chewed on the pork and spit it back out on the plate. I mean, pork does not need to be made into pate. Wow. It doesn't. Don't, no. Because you're one of those cunts who likes that kind of food. You like like high class no, food, I dude. Have... I would go to a farm to table dinner where they killed the cow in front of you and put the steak on your plate. That's the farm to table. I don't need radishes garnished with fucking balsamic vinaigrette and truffle oil that they had the pig find. I think that we're just fine with regular food made well, an artisan burger, some homemade cheese. But instead, these people they made a a, a something crusted trout. It tasted terrible. My dad used to eat these food called chubbies, these little tiny fish that just made our house smell like nast all the time. He was like, oh, these are, the, these are my best kept secret. I went, oh, no one's looking. He would go to the store. He would have to go to a separate grocery store for these things called chubbies. Listen, I know some people who've eaten chubbies. And <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, they're just they're disgusting fish. And Harley's like, no, I brought it home. There was a legitimate head of a trout in the thing. Yeah, that's good. That's no, good that's disgusting. 
You should. The head of the animal should never grace your fridge ever. Why you can't look it in the eye? You can kill it. Absolutely it. not. And also, uh, it would be ashamed of the food that was put out. It would be. It would say, "Kill, bring me back and kill me again." And this time, leave me there. He went. And also, who has trout? Is there trout in Wisconsin? Yes, every everywhere. Oh. Well, that sort of derails that. But anyways, the whole meal was gar- – the only good thing was like brownies. There was brownies. There was two brownies there, brownie and a half. And since I'm a gentleman, I ate the half and gave Lucy the one. So you know what enjoyment I got out of that meal? Nothing. I got a stomach ache and regret. That I, – I texted Harley. I said, they should have just kept it at the farm. No reason to bring any of that to the table. I went, just <laughs> didn't need it. So if you find yourself being like – Wanting to go to some trendy farm to table dinner, or like you got some sort of highfalutin uh, 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 desires to eat this food, don't. Cheese filled breadsticks at Quick Trip and a corn dog for posterity, baby. You walk out of there, corn dogs are the currency of the future. Never, ever again will I trust anybody to give me some sort of. Listen, if you go to a place and they don't hand you a menu and the guy just starts telling you what's in the food, it's ass. It's not worth it i promise you that it is not worth it if you want to i will take you anywhere it's not worth it half the portions always double the money and harley wanted me to work there because i was unemployed for eight hours He's like you can come get paid he said you get 17 dollars an hour to set this event up i said they would have had to pay me 17 dollars an hour to eat it disgusting they should all be ashamed of themselves i mean realistically you should have done it for 17 bucks but (sighs) <sighs> yeah, and then uh, 24 after after you hit seven, and he worked like 15 hours. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but listen, I was unemployed for a day. Like, I, you know what? Yeah, you but do? even if I was employed, that's like really pretty good money, actually, to like just carry tables. You know how many times I've had to carry tables for Dude, free? I could not have looked anyone in the eye every time I go to one food. of your stupid shows. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Can you imagine? I would not have. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's but, true. <laughs> now, but I couldn't have looked anybody in the eye as I served them the food that was served there. I just love, I've been waiting, like, you're just such a child. It's, it's hilarious. And who, and listen, stop using arugula. It's not good. It's just leaves, and they just throw, dude, that is, that is, that's that is, that's that. like putting a big words in your school paper to make it sound smarter arugula has no value it just takes up space and gets in your like it's just it gets in the way of what the point is which is the meat and there was oh and then they had pork belly uh could they have picked the fatter no 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 i've had good pork belly this was as if they took shake and bake pork chops and then only the fat and just put it in one and it wasn't even i mean dude not just flavorless garbage all of it. And I ate it four days ago. And I'm still, I mean, look, listen, I'm heated. getting angry. Yeah, you're heated. Never again will I eat food like that, ever. And then I go on and I figure out, anyway, sorry, Harley. I know you like that. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, and then I'm just I'm fired up and I'm looking on uh, the place. Did you know that there's a place in California where they pay you $10,000 a month? To learn about wine and live in a mansion? No, I didn't know that. If that's not proof that everything is just fake, like that nothing, like that everything is a joke, nothing is real. Yeah. I mean, the amount of shit I deal with for less than half of that, I mean, is staggering. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. And these people, I don't know how they get the jobs. They said there was over seven thousand applications. They picked. Two girls at random from California. They were hot. I would imagine is that was the and I just went and listen. I'm whatever you know. Good for them to make one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year to drink alcohol and be hot. Whatever. Yeah, but but beside the point. The point is, I mean, money. Like it's a joke, right? Wow. In California, going back to your Google comment, you know the cost. Of living. Let it float away. No one, I mean, truthfully, oh, yeah. besides Nate, if you're listening, you know, we're, we're good, but everybody else in California can float away. Truthfully, it could break apart and sink. It could be worse than the movie with the rock San Andreas where California is literally flooding and getting killed. I want double that. I want it raining from above too. I would love, I mean, truthfully, I want everybody in California to drown at once. Well, I think that's a good sp- place to stop. <laughs> Especially when they tried to take the milk title from Wisconsin. I'm not proud of Wisconsin. We're not. I mean, we're fine, right? Like, I don't have some like, oh, we're the cheese state. Congrats. You're fucking dumb. Like, if your number one export is something you didn't make, you know, like, your best accomplishment is letting something sour. 
That's is not paying enough attention to something and then sure. adding some peppers and calling it curds. Right. That's the, you know curds is short for curdle. Curdled milk. This is our biggest claim to fame is just rotten shit. It's just not even yeah. with nothing impressive about us. And we're all uh, I'm an owner of the Packers. Shut up. It's who gives a shit? Do you <laughs> hey, have fun going and sweating in the bleachers every June while that you have no say in anything they do. Right. You know, your vote doesn't, hey, your vote didn't matter here and it won't matter in November, just saying. Anyways, uh, Wisconsin, just not, I mean, Milwaukee is cool. The Bucks won. I'm I'm not to say that I'm not proud. I'm not shitting on it. But this whole regional pride about, like, just people are just. Yeah. I've met a lot of assholes in Wisconsin. We're not Wisconsin nice. Met a lot of dumb, I mean, dumb hicks. You have something or are you just leaning in? I'm just leaning in. He like got close and he was like he had something for me and then he just pulled back. Well, I, my heart is shattered because this is the land that I love. <laughs> I listen. <laughs> I kidding. like Wisconsin. I do like Wisconsin. But if someone told me that Wisconsin was a bag of shit, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel bad necessarily. We have two cities, three cities, maybe. I consider Green Bay to the Fox Cities all one city. Yeah. It has to be. Could you truthfully. imagine if we didn't have the Packers? It would be a desolate wasteland. Be We'd be North Dakota. Yeah. Well, without Milwaukee Boom. and Madison have kept us relevant to some some degree. Uh-oh, we got a text message here. Um, okay, well, we'll get there eventually. Arugula is good, bitch. Hey, why don't you come down here and defend it then? Arugula is ass. Arugula is, arugula is useless. That's a studio audience. Chiming in. I got, I'm getting a lot of feedback. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, with that, I just think that just, I don't even know where I was going to be honest with you. I'm just excited to be back in the studio because it just means I can yell. It means I can get fired up about stupid things. And there's a lot of stupid things these days, people such as posting infographics on your Instagram story. I just want to give a PSA out here. No matter what side you are on this whole ouchy Fauci dilemma, shut up. How does that sound? How do, let's try let's try shutting the fuck up for uh for a for a minute on it. I'm not saying in general, talk about whatever you want to talk about. But like this whole like suddenly everybody has a medical degree on both sides, may I add. The people who are like listen to the sciences, the real scientists are being censored. People are like listen to the other real scientists who are also <laughs> you're like <laughs> shut up. I don't care cuz generally it's someone who I've seen literally do coke off a toilet who's telling me that I'm the problem. Buzz off, probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really. If you, you can, if you, you, we're gonna do a big, uh, 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 what's it called? Venn diagram. Pro choice. Pro, <laughs> pro vaccine. <laughs> Choosing what people do on their body, letting people yeah. choose what they want to do on their body. I mean, truly, you all have more. Listen, you all have more in common than you think. That's all I'm gonna say about it, right? I hate you all equally. I want you all to, from the bottom of my heart, I have disdain for almost every human on the planet, except for a good maybe ten of you. Truthfully and honestly, I love you when I see you, and that's great. But in my heart, in my heart of hearts, I think humans are evil. I think they're, I think they're bad, bad people, and um, everybody likes having a leg up on someone else. So it is fun to call someone a stupid liberal idiot, and it's also fun to call someone a Karen who won't take her mask, you know, who won't put her mask on. I, I like making fun of people, but if I get my daily Instagram scrolling ruined one more time by infographics with misspelled words that aren't from real places that are promoting a vaccine, I just might lose my mind. And if it gets brought up in one more con instead of, hey, what have you been up to? It's, are you vaccinated yet? Yeah. It's ruined small talk. Truthfully, I can't go to a bar. You see a friend from the bar. You're like, what's going on, man? It's been so long. It's not, how's the job? It's not, hey, where are you living? It's, hey, man. Like, oh, you guys back. I mean, just it's zero substance. Yeah. Because what do you do? You say no, and suddenly they're your enemy? Yeah. No. Generally, here's what's happened the last couple times, and I'm going to be very fucking candid. I've seen some friends, and they'll ask me if I'm vaccinated. I'll say no, and they hug me anyway. I go, so you don't care. You like to hide behind your keyboard. If you really gave a fuck, you'd get away from me, or you wouldn't be out at Milo Music in the first place. I feel like, um, you know, throughout history, when you, like, say I was at a moment, like, for me, this I was at Hayden's Manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> this is my struggle. <laughs> I go, but I mean, I'm just saying, 
If you see something, right? This is this goes back to last year, and I fell victim to it too, where you just post random shit. Like you see something, and you're like, that seems like a legitimate fact. Like they're like, it's a think piece. It's really got a lot of opinions and spun webs. And you go, that feels like it supports what I want to everyone to know that I'm doing. And also, I want to shame my uncle Keith because he's a racist. And so I post that, and then I go, and then I realize now, looking like at the vaccine stuff, I go, I like the people who are doing it back to me. I go, that's not even a credible source. I mean, there is credible sources. I, I'm still. Is- gonna get it listen i don't know here's what i'm saying i'm still probably gonna get it but i'm but the the more i get shamed by people who i find much dumber than me truthfully i i think they're stupid people with not like really nothing going on for them i go congrats i hey congrats on your marketing assistant job but if you tell me get vaccinated again i will slap you in the mouth truthfully okay show me your hey show me your medical degree Show me, show me right now your 18, seven, I just, I just enough. Show me your high school biology. Truthfully. Grade. I mean, really I go and the, and like, there's people who out there who have like tangentially related careers to it too. They're like, I work in a, a testing facility uh, for pet products for animals. So I have a doctor degree. You go, shut up, shut up. I, Hey, Hey. And I have a couple hours a day that I spend reading on it. Does that make me, can I go tell people what they can and can't do? No. Try shutting up. This was a very neither pro nor, va- I mean, truthfully, don't try to convince people not to do it either. May I add, okay? You people who are like, don't take it. Shut up. Let people do what they want to do. Can you imagine? I said this the other day. If I didn't have social media, I wouldn't even know there was a pandemic going on. Oh, for sure. You go into Walmart, everybody's just vibing, chilling. Right. And you go, there's a couple people with masks on. That's always. There's been people with masks on since 95. You go into an airport, there's always people with masks on. Hey, I prefer that we wear masks in the airport. I don't have to smile at everyone I see. I don't have to d- d- have that black coffee stank breath from the dude next to me on the plane. I'll keep masks on there forever. But the rest of it, excessive. Yeah, I'm with you. <sighs> that felt good. Yeah, that was heavy. No, it wasn't. It's I mean, just I. This was this is it's, it's what my brain does all day. And tr- when I said I have disdain for everyone on Earth, that's kind of a joke. That was tongue in cheek. I took it too. Listen, far. this is a fucking comedy podcast for the most part. <laughs> it sometimes gets a little jo- Alex Jonesy. Sometimes gets a little preachy. That's, I get that, yeah. but I'm just saying we're having fun here, and I just want everyone to have fun too. Um, which brings me to this: <laughs> I'm locked out of Facebook. Uh, I hate Mark Zuckerberg more than I've hated any human. I mean, truthfully, if I had a gun and two bullets and it was him and Hitler in a room, I'd shoot Mark Zuckerberg twice. Right in the head. Until, I mean, I would actually, I'd I'd shoot him once in the gut and he's like, sweet baby, raise, sweet baby, raise, from his dumb fucking video. I'll give you your account back. Boom. Just right in his head. And Hitler would be like, is that it very good? You've made your transition. And then, and then <laughs> we'd sign our book together and keep going because, you know, I guess book, Andre says it's my book, man of, yeah, book, I have a book deal with Hitler and his publishing company called uh, <laughs> My <know>. More Struggles, <laughs> Struggles Part Two. Um, but anyways, Zuckerberg has got me locked out. So now this hacker is great. They changed my email and my password and my number to account, my, like all the stuff about my account. All the simple I, stuff that you I do worked if you're trying to hack him. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> He's been posting dicks on my status. He's been, uh, he, he broke my relationship off with my fiance, okay? Um, and I go to get back in now. I finally battled this hacker enough where I changed the password to a new one. And when I go to log in, it goes, great. We need your two fat. You, you, thanks for turning on two factor authentication. Please give us the code that you, uh, this like new security thing. And I went, I didn't set that up. So it's going to him now. Yeah. So he doesn't have the password, but he has the code. <laughs> so we each have equal amount of information. It's like, and, a mo- like national treasure or something. A hundred percent. You're racing to get to one now, part. To get to, to get to that password, I had to submit my ID no less than 15 times to Facebook. Yeah. So then I get it. I go to log in with my new password. It goes, send us the or give us the code. I go, I can't. They go, we'll just have to verify your identity then. Send us your ID. I dry closed my laptop and just stared in the space. I went, maybe I don't need Facebook. Maybe just maybe I don't need it anymore. Well, I hate Mark Zuckerberg. I even messaged him. I said, you, need, you and your little shit bags need to let me back in my account. And and then I even posted. I said, old Zuck ain't doing shit about it. You know, Tom would have never let this happen. Tom, Tom would never. Tom would never. He was the uh, truth. As far as like uh, uh, fake accounts go, like fake accounts that are the real person, Tom was the goat. Yeah. The white t shirt where he looks yeah. back like this, right. where he's like throwing it back a little bit on his computer. We need that. We miss that in today's day and age. Hang on a sec here. We're going to actually, I'm going to phone Harley in um, if that's okay to talk about this food. 
Yeah. Is he uh, is he uh, available? He just texted me. To wrap that up, though, fuck you, Mark Zuckerberg. Hey, you on your way? No, I'm on a podcast, and I need to talk to you about the disgusting food you served me the other day. I didn't serve you disgusting food. Harley, Harley, I went on a, what was about a six-minute rant about how disgusting farm-to-table food is. Yeah. I mean, you're wrong. I said my ideal farm-to-table dinner is if they killed the animal in front of you and then just put it on your plate. I'd rather have had that than this disgusting trout head and the car- the moldy carrots. I mean, the whole thing, Harley, top to bottom, might have been the worst meal I've ever eaten, ever. Cold, hot leftovers. I would have rather eaten my own shit at one point. The carrots were not moldy, but those are some strong, some strong things. I mean, Harley, Harley, pork doesn't need to be pate. Pork being pate is disgusting. I mean, I'm not the one who pressed it into pate. Talk to the chef. I, all, all, all I'm saying, Harley, Harley, my, all I'm saying is the claim to fame, Harley, that this is some sort of sustainable thing. This is, this is what I said. This is what I said, to Andre. I said uh, the whole big thing is like, oh, it's real sustainable farming. I said you had to have 170 people drive into bumfuck nowhere to eat dinner. That's not sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we just rented an 80-foot tent, and we got to put hanging lights up, and everybody's having seven beers from the truck that's been running a generator for 12 hours. But, hey, it's sustainable, baby. Who needs cheeseburgers? We flew, we flew the wine in from California. <laughs> I mean, truthfully. I, you know what? I'd pay, I would pay a meal to watch the chef get executed or have to eat his own cooking, which are both probably equally as punishable. <laughs> Disgusting. You said, it, you said it should have stayed on the farm and never made it to the table. I... <laughs> That got me pretty good. That's the equivalent of a rapper being like, that song should have stayed in the backlog, bro. <laughs> that did not need to make it on the album. And I'd say that about everything on that plate that you served. The only good thing was the brownie, and I'm fairly certain that was store-bought. <laughs> no, was, the brownie was good. There was a uh, dessert tart that was really good. Oh, there was a couple tarts there for sure. I'm sure the guy in the chef had some big tart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go back to podcasting. I just needed I needed your take on how bad that food was. Which I didn't know what food he's talking about. It, 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 trust me, and you don't want to. I'd rather eat your runny salsa, uh, salsa any day. <laughs> hey, how about my eggs that are undercooked? I mean, truthfully, my uncle serves eggs that before he just beats them in the bowl, puts them in the microwave for 30 seconds, and calls it done. Yeah. And he goes, that's good. I, one time, I was cooking a scrambled eggs in an appropriate way to not get salmonella, and he came over and turned the stove off. He went, you're going to overcook them. I went, they're still bleed. I, I'm hearing them chirp from the pan. Some would call that sus- sustainable yeah, cooking. Eggs? Well, listen, there was a time here when I was in church. I was, uh, I was supposed to do – I don't remember. I was so fucking uh, – Tart, uh, deserted uh, back in the day. So um, I remember back at the church, there was eggs in the fridge, and I was trying to do a demonstration. Harley, you, do you remember this this youth group presentation, or were you just aged out at this point? I'm cracking I'm cracking eggs in a bowl to be like, sometimes we have a hard outer shell, but inside, like there's like this yolky goodness for God, which, I mean, looking back, not a great analogy, but I was working it. And the first egg I picked up, I cracked it. It was the most rotten, smelly egg that had been in there for... Like, <laughs> <laughs> and the entire room's like, ugh! And uh, I start crying as I'm cracking the egg. And the poor youth group person's like, and sometimes people are just rotten. And, and that's just... <laughs> Whoever that was tried to capitalize on the situation, but that's just so much darker. Hey, never let a good crisis go to waste. You know the rules, brother. No such thing as bad press. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Uh, uh, here's your goodbye gift, Harley. Uh, you tell us what we're doing next. Uh, are we talking about uh, bullying, um, comedy on Saturday, or classic indie rock bands? Uh, bullying. I got a soft spot for, for bullying you. All right. Make sure you tune into the catch up or make sure you turn it into the episode when it releases. Okay, can do. Um, sorry that you didn't appreciate the leftovers. I, it's I not about appreciation. Oh. Sorry that you made me suffer through them next time. Maybe not. The fish head. Oh my gosh. I completely. Well, here, and here's the problem. Harley is that, that, that sort of, that sort of tinfoil <laughs> container, that sort of tinfoil container is uh, uh, always good leftovers. When you have something that has that sort of containment, you know you're in for smack and leftovers. And I could not have been more let down. <laughs> I mean, how, much, hey, how much did you pay for those? All right. All right. I got to go. Anyway, see you guys. <laughs> oh, man. I love when Harley calls into the podcast because I just get them all riled up. My goal in life is to rile up Harley. 
<clears throat> I think everybody else is just to rile you up. That's fair too. Now, uh, the bullying topic. Let's go <laughs> here next. I have wiggled and washed back on this topic a lot. I like because I was bullied, but I also think Such that bullying is good. Okay. Hear me out. I this is this is like the big issue where I get <clears throat> a little bit confused, like or a little bit torn up, right? I think that if you are stupid enough to hit because someone says words to you, you're an idiot. Sure. However, it teaches the person saying those words to know where the line is and not cross. Like you, you know, it's a it's yeah. a plus minus game. Like right. I remember my my dad openly condoned violence back in elementary school. We were getting bullied with words. Harley was getting bullied with words from one kid, and my dad went, "You know what? The next time he says anything to you, you punch him in the stomach." Right. And Harley went to school the next day. The kids gave him a little a little attitude, and Harley turned around and punched him in the stomach. And he probably never said anything again. Nothing. Nothing. Right. Yeah. And then, but dude, and the school almost condoned that back in the day because is there not a better way to establish social pecking order? Smart guys will eventually win, right? right. They're going to design an app that puts, you know, your face on a fucking, you know, a, a poster and you can't get anywhere. Or you're becoming a moron who wears crosses on the back of your jeans and doesn't want the vaccine and you can't get in anywhere. The smart guys win, yeah. right? They'll develop. Bill, you think Bill Gates didn't get his fucking ass kicked in school a couple times? I mean, he's sitting there jerking off in the corner. It's he's a, He probably... He was a dick toucher in class for sure. Yeah. I mean, Jeff Bezos, probably a public masturbator in class. <laughs> Truthfully, these are the kids who got boners and sweatpants and they couldn't continue. Or it would like, you know, like come on, come to girls' Facebook photos, right? But they still win because the smart guy win. But do you think that, I mean, I truly, uh, didn't Zuckerberg got his little ass kicked in, in college? Yeah. He robbed the fucking Winklevosses right. who are massive big guys. So who's the bully? <laughs> Again. Right? I'm kind of okay with it. It's a good full circle. I think it, it establishes pecking order. Like when you, I don't think, I think you're an idiot, right? If like, if you and I were to get in a verbal altercation, this happens on the basketball court a lot, like yeah. for other people, you talk, 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 and talk, and someone punches. You've won. The guy who hit yeah. is an idiot. I, I mean, but you'd learn not to talk back to them again. I think you obviously have to understand the situation. Like that's a dumb one. Like playing basketball, pick up basketball is just stupid. Unless, unless yeah, there really isn't a good one. Um, when you're a little kid, yeah, I definitely that talk about a good way to learn, you know, consequences. But yeah, it never. I mean, but even as a note, it's nature. It lesson. never feels good, right. right? Granted, there's some sucker punch moments, but if I'm dogging on someone well, and I mean. they turn it's, around and pop me, it's appropriate. Right, and and people are so like they're like, no, you better use your words. Like, dude, we're humans, and there's just a time when it's going to happen. Words hurt more. And so I times. guess when I say is bullying okay? I don't know. I think it's important that you get like I call it rounding the edges a little bit. Yeah, not bullying, you can't but beat teasing. The shit out of like, someone. dude, you got no. Of course not. Right. I, I'm not condoning that, like like a bar fight. A lot of times that they're so drunk that it that's where it goes. Is like you know. But I'm saying die. I'm saying like high school to young college, right. like your boy, like your boy's really getting after. Like it's not. It does. I call it like I said, rounding the edges a little bit. You're doing some weird shit that's going against mostly you know the current, and that's fine. And the people who want to keep doing it will find a way to keep doing their weird shit. But it does help you understand like maybe I shouldn't do that in public. Maybe I shouldn't do that. And you, you shower learn. Or, or hey, and maybe I shouldn't keep talking to someone who's bigger than me. That's also something you should learn because, listen, I know we're evolved creatures and we've got big brains and you can throw that stone all you want as a little guy, but when a big guy <laughs> beats your fucking ass because you talked a bunch of crap, I mean, there was a moment in high school, two friends, one of my, one of them I'm still very friends, very close friends with, shout Fritz. The other one I still have friends with, I won't say his name because he would probably wouldn't want the story, but he would always dog me about the food I was eating at lunch and I was losing weight at the time. I was still getting trimmed, but I'd lo there was a couple lunches a week. We'd go out and I'd go big time. I'd get many chicken nuggies. I'd get a big thing. Right. And he just kept getting on me one day. He was like calling me, like calling me names, calling me names. And listen, I'm a weak man. Okay, I for for a guy who uses his mouth to get paid, you know what I'm saying. But truthfully, for a guy who talks to try to make his living, both in my real job and also my hopeful real job coming up, yeah. Um, I I'm a weak man. If you push me enough, I'll just punch you because I'm bigger than you. Like I'm bigger. That's just what it is. Like I hardly we get into those altercations. I go because I am. I go I'm four inches bigger than you and almost seventy pounds bigger. Like I will beat you up, and it is what it is. And I remember I lost my temper that day, and they were just all ragging me like you're so sensitive. Like who the fuck hits after that? I went. Are you gonna do it again? No. Right. They would make fun of me for having a sweet tooth back in my house. I punched my fucking dad, dude. He kept getting on me about having a, a lot of cavities. And at one point at dinner, it was him, Joe, and uh, Harley. And I said, the next person 
who makes a sweet tooth joke is getting punched. And every person after that is getting punched. And I went, and if you want to fight me back, that's fine. I went, if you want to make it serious, well, that's fine. They wouldn't stop. And they learned Harley's arm was bruised up. Joe and my dad, I was punching my dad. And they were, I mean, they were loving it. But also the joke stopped. I go, hey, yeah. sometimes you got, sometimes you got to get physical. Take matters in your own hands. Literally, like the lady said outside the taco stand the other day. These hands. This is my mama telling my best weapons. These uh, hands. Are we going to touch that? We talked about it on the catch-up. But uh, for those who maybe haven't heard, brief synopsis. Almost died for tacos the other night. Almost got shot. Almost got shot for tacos. You know, and also, that's a big thing, too, is that kid should have gotten beaten up. Yeah, right. Really. That, I mean, so it's your fucking bachelor party where... and you bring a gun to Mile of Music. I mean, he's like the dessert Harley talked about. A real sweet tart. But, you know, swap some words. I mean, really, but what are we doing here? I mean, these guys are sitting behind us talking smack about, oh, I'm packing, I'm packing, I'm a soldier. Well, I walked up, this is what he said. I'm ordering my tacos out here. I'm a soldier. You say the word, I'll kill him and him and her. And he's pointing to all of our friends. And I was like, wow, not great. I was like, that's not what you want to hear is you order four beef tacos that are surely going to take too long to get ready. Yeah. So then we're sitting there with the whole puddle situation. If you want the full recap, go to the Tuesday Catch Up. But then... Uh, these two guys that are sitting behind us who are the ones talking about being soldiers and just being fucking morons. I mean, truthfully, the lowest class of citizen you could get. I would honestly, hey, if I had Zuckerberg, Hitler, and those two in a room, I'd probably try to find a way to line them up. (laughs) But Hitler's still my book publisher, can't do it. Um, And uh, they start going at each other a little bit. And uh, he's like, get up, motherfucker, get up. Like, this is the best man is saying this to the group. The reason we know that is they're fucking wearing shirts that are labeled. Listen, listen, (laughs) that's like wearing a name tag and wanting to fight. Shut up. You're a pussy. Shut up. You don't. I mean, what are we doing here? Can you imagine if I was out there with a fucking like, like, I mean, like I'm with stupid shirt or like a, like a family vacation, uh, uh, like my name's on the front Dad. and I'm, and I'm arguing with my brother. Like I'm going to kill. I'm a soldier. You're in Appleton, Wisconsin. Shut up. You're at a taco place. That's not even good. They don't even like you. Get out of here. And they're sitting there. And also when, since when did gangbangers like indie music, shut up. Milo Music hasn't had a rapper in fucking six years because all it does is it's it's different. It's just it's different. Okay, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> We're gonna edit that post. It's not what I mean. I mean, all I'm saying is indie music is for fucking white dudes and losers who just are sad about breakups that never fucking happened. Right? It's a mellow vibe. Rap is intense. It's loud. It's this, and I like rap. Don't fucking. I mean, maybe we're <laughs> okay, gonna cut grandpa. this whole thing. <laughs> And I like rap, but uh, listen, I do a lot of, I do a lot of diversity initiative work. It's you can have, you can say funny things and also not mean them like that. But anyways, these gangbangers, and I will call them gangbangers because if you call yourself a soldier and say you're packing, you're a gangbanger. Sorry. It is what it is. I don't, I regret nothing. I said, Hey, it is what it would have killed me. So we never said what they looked like. And I bet you every single person listening is thinking of something else that they did not look like. No. Well, we're sitting outside a taco place. There you go. Lead yourself to the... Hey, I brought the horse to water. Drink it now. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Well, one of them looked like a chode. They look like Ed, Ed, and Eddie, but Mexican. You know, they just... just, just, I mean, really, just... And and ugly, too. I get why he was carrying a gun. I'd kill myself if I looked that gross, too, truthfully. I mean, he was, you know, a lot of handsome Mexican people. That amigo was not one of them. Okay? (laughs) Shut up. I'll say what I want. Shut up. I don't care anymore. I don't care. The the world is on fucking fire, Andre. If if a true, I mean, and, and this is a genuine thing. The world is on fucking fire. Okay. Google is sending his people back to the office, and you're gonna worry that I said amigo in a condescending man. Shut up. Go clean your own house. And, and listen, and if you've made it this far in the podcast, you're obviously a fan, so you're fucking here now. So shut up. Anyways, so the guy's behind us getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> he tells him he'll stand up and I'm not using accents, but he's like, stand up motherfucker. And then the guy, there's a big guy, even bigger, like the biggest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting behind them and he turns around and he goes, um, Hey guys, come on. Cool it, man. You guys are friends. Don't do this. And they're like, fuck you, buddy. Like immediately. I mean, dude, it felt like we were in Boston and we were in Appleton on the side street of college app. And he goes, fuck you, buddy. And the guy goes, oh, whatever. Fine. Beat the shit out of each other. I don't give a fuck. And they're like, how about we beat the shit out of you? And the big guy goes, I'll fucking try me as he's like walking away, which the big guy like in over his head a little bit. I mean, maybe he didn't hear their packing, but he was sitting next to them. 
And also, go home. I mean, again, what did we say? What was we say at the top of the show? Have you ever tried shutting the fuck up? Yeah. I mean, truthfully, because what happens? It's addition by subtraction. They kill each other. Boom. There's two less gangsters, and you're fine. But instead, right. this fucking accountant from Kakana is going to get himself shot because he wants to be the nice Wisconsin guy. Shut up. Yeah. You're at Mr. Taco. This is not, I mean, you, this is not your, you don't get to mess around here. You're lucky they fed you, you fuck. And so anyways. <laughs> uh, is this the worst episode of Chumming It Up ever? This might be the best one. <laughs> We're having fun. I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, they go into the road. Now, big guy's got a Peroni in his hands or some sort of glass bottle. I don't know how he had a glass bottle on the street, come to think of it, but there was one, right? You saw the shatter. I don't recall. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah because again. a car ran into over. Yes, correct, correct. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> anyways, they go into the street, and they start slap fighting with this guy. And here's where I say that these kids should have gotten beaten up because they don't know what a real fight is because it looked like they'd never been in a fight before. They didn't want to throw their punch. Dude, dude, gangsters fight in diagonal. They turn their bodies diagonal and they just like attack exactly like right. a Dragon Ball Z character. I yeah. mean, it's embar- I, it's embarrassing right. watching like watching kids who shouldn't fight who think they should be fighting is embarrassing. Right, upsetting, alarming. Anyways, so they break the guy's glass bottle, which I'm like, oh no, this could be serious. And then I hear, I'm packing, I'm packing, I'm packing, and I'm sitting there against the wall waiting for my tacos. Which may I add, not good. Yeah. Oh, I mean, honestly. Step above farm to table. Truthfully, they weren't. They were not good. But um. Anyways, I'm standing against the wall, yeah, right. and I'm getting yelled at. I, I mean, at this point, I'm just not even like because I was, you know, a little indulged at this point, and I'm hearing from right, hate it, hate it, hate it. Look, it's Lucy's trying to get me to come away. She's like, he's got a gun. I was like, come on. Hopefully, <laughs> maybe. And I was like, I mean, really, it's either the tacos that are going to kill me or uh, or this dude. Um. And yeah, I just wasn't willing to leave. I was like, boo, 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 tacos. And I stayed around and it was honestly worth it. And then the cops came, like I said, and I told this on the catch up, but yeah. they like, they looked like the Gestapo, dude. They were one red armband away from, I mean, taking some brown haired people away. Truthfully, yeah. they were scary looking and they're like, where is the perpetrator? <laughs> and I snitched. Sorry. I know maybe I shouldn't, you know? Well, you're here. Still. But you ruined a great, you ruined a great <laughs> afternoon. Or a night. You ruined it. Uh, <clears throat> cap off to a great night. You know, you gave us a... Because here's what happens when, when you get traumatized. Your tummy feels all weird and you're like, ugh, this is, you know... Yeah. You know, like you don't feel normal after yeah. something traumatizing happens. We would, know. We've had two traumatizing events this summer. Yeah. Andre tried to kiss me. It didn't go well. I'm kidding. It was something else. We had a man who had a... Oh, yeah, we talked about it. We did it. We told the story on the catch-up right. about our friend. Well, could you get the, the, could you get the podcast right? Otherwise, I'm leaving. Whatever. Listen. It's a lot of microphone time. That's whatever comes out. Anyways, so that almost happened. Um, but yeah, bullying. I mean, if those kids would have gotten their asses kicked a little bit more uh, as kids, maybe they'd be you know working for Google Remote right now. The alternative is, but maybe instead they got soldiers. beat up too much. No, if you got beat up too much, you shoot right away. True. Yeah, you don't just keep that in your back pocket. That's someone. And also, I don't think he was packing. His pants were sagged very low, very low center of gravity. Fat dude. I, I honestly. I don't think you would have been able to draw it very fast either. Right. You know, <clears throat> rub me as a guy who would not be okay if he killed somebody too. Yeah. Like couldn't walk it away. There's no such thing as soldiers in Appleton, Wisconsin. I almost got beat up one time because uh, uh, some like fucking Persian drug lords were in Appleton for some fucking reason or another. And we're sitting at the pizza place and I had a mixtape that I bought off a dude outside for $3 because I wanted to support his, his uh, you know, bustling career. Also, good karma, right? Hopefully someone does that for me one day. And I'm sitting there, and this fucking drunk ass like Persian drug lord comes up to me. He's like, "What is this? What's this? What's this?" And I was like, "Uh, I I don't know." I told him it was like a million dollars. I just said something snarky. It was funny as fuck too. And he took it. and He just smacked it on the ground. And so I said, "You're gonna pay me five dollars for that." And he, and then he was talking some more smack to me or whatever. <clears throat> and then he said, uh, "Um." What is that? That shirt from fucking Old Navy? Because he was wearing like bedazzled. He's like, is that fucking, is that from Old Navy? And I went, you're goddamn right it is. I was like, are you wearing bedazzled jeans? I went, who the fuck is this guy? And everybody's like, I had started to gain a little yeah. momentum in the room with me. And then he goes, how about, and then I'm getting kicked under the table. And I look across and Harley's friends, Dane's like, they've got a fucking gun they showed me earlier. And I was like, anyways, man, have a good night. You can have the mixtape if you want it. But God, I hate people like that. Another person who should be, who should have been beat up. Yeah. I like the one-on-one skill. 
squared off fights. I would have killed the kid too. And I'm not even a good fighter. He just was like, he was just a drunk weirdo. Um, but I like one off fights. I don't think we need to be pulling guns on people. Yeah. I'm with you. Anyways, I did comedy in front of Lucy's parents for the first time. How'd well, the first how'd real time. How'd it go? I would say from a true, per- <clears throat> it was one of my best 20 minutes I've ever done. Truth, just from a rhythm standpoint and improv, I was out there a little bit, but I very much enjoyed what I was doing because I was like, you know what? I knew I, I didn't do like my material to a T, but I was grabbing, like I knew what was going to hit and what wasn't. Yep. And I got away with a lot of stuff. It's it was good. fun. Yeah. You had fun, didn't you? Yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty good? Fun. Yeah. You didn't like it. No, I liked it. You didn't like it. That's Andre's I don't like it face. No, I liked it. It was good. <clears throat> you improved well. You roasted some people. It was good. I had to do it. Yeah, but it was good. Yeah, it was a safe environment. Right. That's that, you know. But yeah, small room too. The problem is Lucy's parents keep coming to see me at um There's, at very small venues. Yeah. Or weird venues. They saw me at Paper Fest and then they see me, you know, they saw me there with twenty people at the attic. It's like I would love for them to come to a show where I'm like there's a hundred people and I'm actually like Yeah. You that know, one doing on the Thursday. The Marshfield week, the show. The Marshfield was excellent. Bless up. That was one of my favorite shows I've ever done. That, and I had to host. Can you imagine I got to feature on that? God. No, I agree. That that was one of the better shows I've been to. Yeah, I had a blast. Um, the one thing that bugs me about doing comedy in front of people who don't, or like her parents who do it, is like, he's like, I just wish you would have, uh, you know, like ribbed on me more. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, no one else knows you. So what am I going to like do inside jokes? And then also like, Hey dude, I've got material written like that. I, that I do like, I can't, I'm not yeah. going to go in the back and just write a bunch of jokes about like a bunch of father-in-law jokes. Like, I, th- I, I think that's the life of a <clears throat> comedian though. It's like, you'll forever Ugh. put that in your skit. Right. Why don't you fucking put that in my ass? All right. Oh shoot, dude. I haven't been recording. He'd actually be fired after this one. Um, all right. Uh, let's finish up with Mile of Music. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. So we went to Mile of Music, an illustrious music festival um, for uh, 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 my, it's a mile of music. There you go. <laughs> all right. We'll see you next week. It's like 300, 400 bands um, in downtown Appleton, whatever. I like it's mostly indie rock, indie rock, indie jazz, indie. It's all indie music. All has to be original tunes. Um, Every indie rock band is Kings of Leon. Sure. Fact. Book it. Yep. Okay. Um, but here's what we're going to say. I mean, truthfully, like, it's always fucking three. Th- so there was a three brother band that we watched uh, that we like very much. Uh, they're, they're, their names are Brothers something or other. Brothers else. But Andre walks out and he calls them three brothers homo and just <laughs> drops me on the sidewalk well, with that no, shit. I, I, because we were trying to like, oh, like, when do they play again? And I was like, who? Three brothers homo? Like, uh-huh. So good. Um, the problem is, uh, there's just it's just it's too loud. It's too loud. I didn't like how loud the music that was. That one was loud. Yeah, my ears, my ears were getting blown. And then also, like, it's just I just they pander. Indie music, indie bands pander. All their songs are the same. They're about like I said, breakups that have never happened, um, or they make up names to fit a narrative. And it's just overall, just not a like. I I don't mind them, but the vibe is always the same. Uh, the the one guy. I mean, we. It's like this song's about Adriana. I don't know an Adriana. <laughs> yeah, and also, yeah, he's like, I don't know, it just rhymed with fucking Indiana, Indiana, whatever I had to say. I'm like, okay, so you're pandering. All they do is pander. All, I mean, granted, I like music. I like right. artists. I think they're very talented, but like just dumb. And I, it's just, it, and they all, I'll, I'll, we're going to do a little indie music here in a second. Um, but truthfully, it's just, is there, we need more fat indie rock singers. They're all too skinny. They're all addicted to Adderall. All, and, tr- and really, if your whole job, if, how, many, how many skinny traveling salesmen do you see? Zero. Right. And you're going to tell me that these people who travel more than that and 24-7 yeah, and drink, drink and eat fast food are skinny? They're drug addicts. They're all drug addicts. Okay? I want more fat indie rock singers. Put it out there. They My might, size are bigger. They might not be good, though, then. They can bellow, dude. You get to that size, you can really, you know, you can really put it out there. Anyways, um, and then also, like, no one has appreciation for the music at Mile of Music. That's kind of my only beef. It's, a, it's more of a party. Like, listen, these guys were singing a sad song, which I'm pretty sure after listening to the lyrics, their sister died or something. And then in, the, in, like, the calm down part of the guitar, you hear the girl go, <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa, where are you? 
ah, like loud as this person's like, like yeah, a, just scream. She's in the front row, may I add you? And I was like, hey, we're at a concert and they're having a moment on stage doing this, you know, the three brothers homo are kissing. And she had the nerve to interrupt it. And then it's just a bunch of drunk white frat bros. Like, you don't even like this music. Right. You guys like g Easy and Mike Studd. Get out of here. True. I mean, really? And then we're going to play a little indie rock, and I'm going to try to freestyle over it. Can you come unlock your laptop? I'll, blop, I'll blur you out of the camera. All, all it needs is my finger. You know what I mean? Okay. This is uh, it's called Classic Indie Rock Band. I haven't really written any other lyrics, so if it sucks, we're just going to cut it. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. Should we do some fake crowd noise first? Yeah, we can make this a production. This is fancy. dead air shut up this is fine this is this is what it's all about people but i don't want to hear any bullshit from you guys what do you do you have anything to cover while i get this under control what do you have what do you got going on uh what do i have going on andre's doing the vlogs now we're doing a vlog a week it's starting yeah. to release uh this week we're starting to produce video yeah um of the life of pi i like that life of pod life of pod life of pod yeah okay let's see if this works at 1-800-CONTACTS uh, I mean, what the hell no This is what happened at Milo Music too. Don't worry. Hey everybody We're Three Brothers Homo We're from uh, Kansas City, Missouri uh, We've been on the road for a while We're real happy to be with you uh, What is it? App- Appleton, we're really happy to be here, Appleton Yeah How y'all doing tonight? <laughs> We love Mile of Music, man. You guys are so fun, man. We got four more sets this week, man. But we're going to rock and roll tonight. You guys ready? Yeah, all right. This song is called, uh, this one's called uh, Classic Indie Rock Band. Uh, we wrote it one night. We were in the car, and there was a lot of rain on the road. And I thought, man, I turned to my buddy, my, my Braxton, my, my bassist, and I said, man, life is crazy, man. Being an indie band, man. so crazy these guys fuck and then now uh y'all wet aren't you huh all right here we go all right this one's called uh like i said classic uh indie rock band i want y'all to grab someone real real special to you i have someone special all right, we love you, sweetie. Come see me after the show. Suck me out in the band. Here we go. We're a classic indie rock band. White girls dancing. Leave their white man for the front row where they scream two lyrics they don't understand because they don't mean anything. Oh, 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 oh. Ready? Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. We're a classic indie rock band. We drive around in our van We sleep with lots of sevens In motel fucking sevens Can we get a Whoa, oh, oh, oh Here we go Oh, 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 oh Here comes a verse about a girl I dated she was cool and then we separated everything is a drawn out rhyme because we have to fill three minutes and 30 seconds worth of time to end our song and put it on the album every white girl is screaming and they might come back to my van and maybe in their pants uh the lyrics got dirty but it doesn't really sound like it Indie rock bands get away with everything because we're white and we have ponytails ready. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go, everybody. Oh, 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 oh. This song, it's been a blast. We're gonna look back at the past and thank God damn it. I should have worked at Google. Pull me back to the office and show me your boobles. <laughs> I'm running out of lyrics on the spot, but that chick in front is super fucking hot. 
Come here, baby, sing my song. We're an indie rock band and we're not in town long. Seriously, suck my asshole and my balls. But I love you girls and this song goes on and on. It's like a ah, 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 oh. Everybody in the crowd, here go. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>